everybody and welcome back to my channel welcome back to the momentum and impulse playlist in the last video we looked at momentum as well as change of momentum now we're going to be looking at Newton's second law in terms of momentum now we learned all about Newton's second law in grade 11 and I'm going to show you how we incorporate Newton's second law with the principles of momentum to give us a new formula that we will be using let's go I know a lot of you are thinking, why on earth are we combining Newton's laws, which was a problem on its own, which was difficult on its own, with momentum? But I promise you, it's not difficult, it's not that challenging if you stick with me and follow what I'm saying. Right, now first of all, before I show you how simple it is, I want to remind you of what we did in the previous lesson. So I showed you how to define and how to calculate momentum. Remember, momentum is equal to the mass of an object multiplied by the velocity of that object. So P is equal to M times V. Easy, it's a vector, so it needs a direction. Remember that. We also looked at change in momentum. Why would momentum change? Because velocity changes. So it's your final momentum minus your initial momentum. And you might be thinking, why does it say MVF minus MVI? Remember, M times VF, that is final momentum. And MVI, that's initial momentum. And change means final minus initial. Now, jumping into stating Newton's second law in terms of momentum. Above me, you can see the definition that you need to know for this. So they can say, state Newton's second law in terms of momentum. And you have to say, the net or resultant force acting on an object is equal to the rate of change of momentum of the object in the direction of the net force. That sounds like a mouthful. But if I break it down and explain it to you, I think you'll, I think you'll get it. So first of all, what was Newton's second law of motion? I hope you guys remember that Newton's second law of motion in symbols can be defined as F net, the net force or the resultant force, is equal to the mass multiplied by acceleration. So that's Newton's second law of motion. Let's go back to the definition quickly. It says the net or resultant force acting on an object. So that's this, the net or resultant force acting on an object. Let's see what the next part says is equal to the rate of change of momentum, you might look at that and say, hmm, it's not equal to the rate of change of momentum, it's equal to mass times acceleration. But what I want you to remember is, how do we calculate acceleration? Remember from grade 10, acceleration is equal to change in velocity over change in time, or the rate of change of velocity, velocity divided by time. And how do we work out the change in velocity? It's VF minus VI. Remember, as soon as you see a triangle, it means change. And as soon as you think of change, you must think of final minus initial. So change in velocity is final velocity minus initial velocity. And we divide that by time. And that gives us acceleration. So what if I had to take this? and replace acceleration with all of that stuff, what would happen? What would my formula look like? It would say F net equals, I'm leaving mass, I'm not replacing mass. Instead of acceleration, I'm going to say VF minus VI, let's put it in brackets, divided by delta T. Okay, I can put mass over one if I want to, so I'm basically combining two fractions. But do you see anything that we learned yesterday? Is anything jumping out at you like, oh my word, I know that we learned that yesterday. What about this? Did we not learn that yesterday? What is that? Let's go back to what we learned yesterday. Remember we learned change of momentum, MVF minus MVI, and I said you can take out mass as a common factor, and you're left with VF minus VI. Take a look at that. And take a look at that. It's the same thing. Okay, so what we're doing on this slide over here is we're deriving a new formula. So let's take a look at this again. What I did over here is I said the change in momentum is equal to mass, take mass out as a common factor, multiplied by VF minus VI. So this yellow stuff is change in momentum. So if I go back to this formula, instead of writing all this yellow stuff, I can just write change in momentum. I hope that makes sense. What I'm trying to tell you guys is that the yellow stuff is change in momentum. Because remember, according to what we learned yesterday, delta P is equal to M 
Vf minus Vi. Okay, so instead of writing all of this, I can just write delta P, change in P. So what I'm doing is I'm getting from Newton's second law and I am changing that into a completely new formula. What I'm basically doing is I'm expressing Newton's second law in terms of momentum. If you don't understand the derivation process or how I derived the bottom formula from Newton's first law, it's okay because we give you this formula in your exams. Okay, we give you that formula so you don't need to stress. Let's look at that formula and look at the definition I just showed you. Remember, our new formula looks like this. The net or resultant force acting on an object, that's this, is equal, there's my equal sign, to the rate of change of momentum. As soon as you see rate, you must know you are dividing by time. That's a very important thing to know in physics and chemistry. As soon as you see rate, you should know you are dividing by time. So the net or resultant force acting on an object, that's over there, is equal to, that's over there, the rate so dividing by time, of change of momentum. There's change of momentum. Okay, so rate is dividing by time. Do you see how the definition fits the formula? So if you ever forget the formula, you look at the definition. If you ever forget the definition, you look at the formula. And this over here is how your formula will appear on your formula sheet. So what I've done is I've taken a screenshot from the exam guidelines, and from your final physics paper one exam papers and under the section called force on your exam guidelines or your formula sheets you'll see that little formula over there that is how the formula looks remember we just learned about it looking like this f net is equal to change in momentum divided by change in time all they did okay so we learned about it like oh, it's just a bit squashed over there we learned about it like that all they did to get it from this form to that form is they took time over. So F net multiplied by delta T is equal to delta P. And what we're going to learn in the next few videos is that this over here, F net multiplied by delta T, that is actually called impulse. So impulse is actually also equal to the change in momentum, which is where the impulse momentum theory comes from. I hope that makes sense. We will do impulse in the next lesson. I'll see you guys then.